This is an experiment with RF MOSFET type RD15SVF1 consisting of two sections, the prototype and the data sheet. The prototype uses the SAA1057 base oscillator operating at 100 MHz. It then drives three other transistors and a dummy load. Each transistor has its own RFI suppression, which is very important for every RF transmitter. Q1 is a switch, Q2 is in class C, and Q3 is of no particular configuration, just a personal perception to find out what will happen. The oscillator is reprogrammed to generate 100 MHz. This is the general overview of the prototype along with the location of critical components. Q1 and Q2 are adjusted to observe collector current and operating temperature. This particular configuration of pre-driver and driver circuit arrangement never fails. It always works especially in FM interface. Note that tuning Q2 to drive 50 ohm resistive load causes a wide variation in collector current from 50 to 90 milliamp. Both transistors are only warm after 10 minutes of operation. Then comes the fun part, the RD15 final stage with personal instinct on input and output circuitry. VC1 at the gate of MOSFET is rejuvened to match input impedance of Q3, then the gate threshold voltage is slowly increased. The outcome of the test is a happy ending. Gate voltage takes full control of power output from the MOSFET, which is getting hotter and hotter. The dummy load itself also suffers the same heating. This is full circuit for Q3, both the input and output working without calculation. Let's see what the data sheet has to say about the quick and dirty work. Number 1. It is an RF MOSFET outputting 15 watts at 175 MHz. 2. It has an equivalent circuit. 3. The gate threshold starts around 2.5 volts compared to 4 volts, as in its younger brother, the RD06. Just for curiosity, half a dozen of each transistor were tested to see threshold effect on voltage across the load. With the drain circuit connected to resistive load, this gap shows voltage across the load at different gate voltages. Which means if we are to use these devices for linear audio amplifier, the RD06 will provide greater dynamic range at its input port. But because no one is going to buy RF MOSFET and use them in audio amplifier, so in reality, everybody is going to drive the gate of both transistors to obtain maximum drain current. Doing so is going to end up having square wave at the output port, which needs to be converted to a non-square wave of some sort. 4. Because there should be a metal oxide film that separates the input from the output. Therefore, the device will have very high isolation between input and output port. The good news is, it will have very high power gain compared to a BJT. 5. The device operates over a wide range of frequency and its input impedance can be calculating from the S11. According to the data sheet, the S11 and the impedance for 175 MHz and 520 MHz are as shown. Let's consider this conversion for a minute. Two boundaries of different impedance are interconnected and the RF waveform being injected from the first boundary may not be 100% transmitted as some may be reflected back to the source. The amount of what is transmitted and what is not is described by voltage reflection coefficient or gamma. This so-called gamma is the ratio of the diff and the sum of both impedance. Taking transmission line as an example, the boundary of the sort and the load is separated by another boundary of transmission line which has characteristic impedance of such zero. Therefore, two gamma exit, one on the sort side and the other on the load side. If the impedance of the transmission line and the road are purely resistive, a condition called lossless transmission line occurs. 
Also, if impedance absorbed and load are equal to Z0, a condition called match impedance occurs. In the case of the input of the RDE15, the characteristic impedance is based on 50 ohm, and the gamma is now called S11, which will be matched to Z0 of 50 ohm, no more, no less. Going back to the data sheet earlier, this is how the S11 is converted to input impedance of the RD15, which also implies that below 300 MHz, the impedance is capacitive, and above 300 MHz, the impedance is inductive. The S parameter is specific to a device with one port, two ports, three ports, etc. This slide shows characteristics of a two-port device with all kinds of different names for scattering parameters beyond the scope of this video clip. In English language, this slide shows some of the possibility to drive the RD15. And as mentioned earlier, the output of the MOSFET normally creates all kinds of harmonics, which is treated by definition of classes namely C, D, E, F, and G as shown.